Hey guys, Caitlin here. Today I want to show you the memory boxes that I made for my kids recently. This is something that I wish I had done back when my oldest was first born or before I had kids um, so that I could have been filing their keepsakes along the way. I did not start this until my oldest was seven and I was pregnant with my fourth baby. So I had accumulated a lot of stuff over the last seven years and I realized that, you know, I didn't have stuff labeled well. I couldn't remember, you know, who drew this picture and who wrote this little note and what it even said because that's when their spelling wasn't good and I just was thinking, you know, like all this stuff, I want to remember it. I want to hang on to it. I want them to have it when they get older. We need a system and I love to organize things. So I went looking for a system and this is what I decided on. Now this is just keepsakes that are unrelated to school. We homeschool and so at the end of the school year, all the stuff that they've done um, gets stored separately together so that if I ever need to show, you know, what they've done or, you know, that we're actually doing our schoolwork, that kind of stuff, that's all separate. So this is just things like cards that they get for their, you know, for birthday gifts and um, notes that they write to each other and little drawings that they've made, just things that I want to hang on for them to have later on down the road so they can look and see, oh look, you know, and things like certificates that we've gotten for um, things we participated in church and that kind of stuff. That is in these memory keepsake boxes. So what I did was I got file boxes, one for each of my kids. These came from Target but they also have some similar ones on Amazon and I'm sure Walmart and all those other places. I'll link to the ones that we got from Target as well as some options on Amazon if you don't have a Target near you. But I just got a box that has the grooves in the side for hanging file folders. And then I bought a set of file folders for each child. Now I went with some colorful ones from Amazon so that they could each have a different color and I will link to those. You can do whatever, you know, you have on hand or whatever color, but I liked they each had a different color because they looked pretty, but you got the file folders. They come with the labels. You take some time to print those out on your computer, put them in, and then your boxes are basically done. I did also cut their names out with my silhouette and applied those on there so that they would be labeled by, with their names as well. But um, it's, you know, a little bit of work at the beginning. And then if you're like me and you have years of papers accumulated, it is a lot of work to go through and sort those for the past years. But then once that's done, it's really easy going forward. I mean, my intention now that I've got these done and set and sorted is they'll be stacked up and I'm not going to be opening them like every day or even every week. I will just keep papers that my kids make throughout the year and then a couple times a year or definitely at the end of the year, open their boxes, pull, you know, the 2021 folder and eat, I know each child's thing go in the folder for that year. And we start over next year and, you know, I've, I've already got the previous years filed because I'm all caught up now. So it'll be really easy to keep that stuff caught up. Um, now, one thing that I wish I had done, so just sharing this in case you, you know, are, are just starting out with your kids, is I really wish I had done a better job about writing on the papers who made it. I'm talking like things that they have, you know, drawn or colored or whatever. Who made it, the date, and then maybe a little description. What was the picture of or what did the note say? Because, you know, when they're first starting to write, you don't know what they say most of the time and they have to explain it and you translate it. I wish I'd written that stuff down because as I was going through to put things in these boxes, I had this big pile of papers. Half the time I didn't know who did it or what it was supposed to be. Was it the first thing they ever colored? Was it the first thing they made in Sunday school? And so a lot of things I had to like really guess on or you know, I wasn't sure. And so I wish I'd done a better job. And so now I'm trying to be better about, you know, of course, you know, now that we're caught up, I know the date, um, or I know at least the year, even on the date, but trying to just jot down like who wrote it and what they said or what it was supposed to be, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll show you what my tabs are. What I decided to do for my tabs 
was I picked to, I have the first tab is before birth. So that's things like their ultrasound pictures, um, cards that we get at baby showers for them, that kind of stuff. The next tab is medical records. So it's got things like, you know, every time you go to the doctor and they do the height and the weight, they like at our doctor, they give you a little card with the height and the weight and then also a paper that shows where they are on the percentile. So those types of things, I file them in there so they can look back at those later or if I need them for whatever uh, they're referenced in there as well. And then past that, I just have one file folder for each year from the time they're born until about age 20, I think is how it worked out with how many folders I had. So, you know, the first year, there's not a whole lot in there because they're not making anything, but it may have like some like for my youngest, it's got cards that his older siblings have made for him, you know, welcome to the world type cards. So then each year I just file in there the things that we want to say from that year. So that's, it's really simple. Like I said, once you get it set up, it's really, really easy to maintain it and to keep your kids things, um, taking care of. I don't keep every single drawing they make, every single note they write, every single thing they color. I just can't. I That would just be too much. So um, we kind of keep the best of the best, some favorite things. Um, at this point, I keep more than I probably will forever, but what I, my thinking is is to, to file it now and then maybe a year from now go back and go back through it because I feel like once you're further away from an event, it's easier to get rid of things. And so we'll kind of do like a purge to make sure that this box is not getting overstuffed because I just, I don't want to keep a whole ton of stuff. Because the boxes are not super full right now, the second, the back half of the box I actually have other non-paper related things. So this is my youngest child's. So it's what it would look like when you first make one. It's not very full. You know, there are a few things in there, but not a lot. I'll show you my oldest. It is more full. He's got seven years of papers and cards and that kind of thing. However, there's still space in the back. And so right now, I actually have some things stored in the back that we won't be able to keep in there forever. But for now, when we have the space, why not use it? And that's things like each of the kids has a Ziploc bag that has got um, like hats and gowns that were personalized, things that we can't pass down to the next child because it has their name or their initial on it. Um, I don't know if they'll want to keep them forever, but I just, as of right now, have put them in a bag and they're in the back of their little box. Hospital bracelets, um, baby books, just some items that are not paper, they can't be filed in the folders but are things we want to hang on to. Now, as they grow and as we fill these boxes, I'll probably have to remove the non-paper items and make a separate keepsake box that's like things. Um, and so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now, since there's plenty of space, that's where I've stashed those types of things for each kid. So their box has their, their hanging folders plus some extras in the back for now. So that's it, not, not a whole lot. It's just a box hanging folders, label them with the years, and then start filing those papers away. Once you get caught up from, you know, if you're behind like I was, once you get that part done, that was the hardest part. Once that was done, now it's really super easy to just open the boxes and file stuff in the 2021 file for the correct child. And then next year we'll do the same thing with 2022 and so on and so forth. So um, it's really great. I'm really proud of myself for getting this done. It makes me feel like really organized. And when the kids give me papers, I don't think like, you know, where am I supposed to put these? Because now I have a spot for them. I also made a box for myself. It's not, it's not as pretty. It doesn't have a label. It doesn't have pretty folders inside it. I just used a box we had on hand and some folders we had on hand, but I made one for myself also labeled with the years so that I can put things in there like Mother's Day cards and notes that they write specifically to me and, you know, like little things like that that I want to keep for myself that aren't necessarily like their keepsakes that they would take with them when they leave my house with things that I want to keep for myself. So I have another one that I keep in my closet as well. Yeah. I hope that's helpful as you are making memory boxes. These would also make a great baby gift. So if you have someone in your life who's getting ready to have a baby, you could go ahead and make them one of these and get it all set up for them so that they from the get-go can start filing their baby's papers away. And I'm sure they'd be very thankful because that's something that I wish I'd done from the beginning too. But anyway, I hope that was helpful. Y'all have a good day. Bye.